Słuchasz Radia Pryzmat, Staromiejskiego Centrum Kultury Młodzieży w Krakowie. Uwaga, uwaga! Zaczynamy program poza rządem. Good evening, my name is Martina and you are listening to Prismat Radio. Our topic of volunteering is continuing tonight. You already heard about volunteering from a perspective of foreign volunteers who are staying here in Krakow for nine months. And now you will hear some more. Before we start with the topic, we're going to listen to Good Omen by Quietly Concerned. And welcome back. That was Quietly Concerned and Good Omen. So me and all of the other volunteers that you hear here are a part of EVS project here in Krakow with our association, STREAM, Youth Development and Integration Association. When I say that I'm an EVS volunteer, it means that I got here with the help of EVS, the European Voluntary Service. EVS is European Union program that promotes the mobility of young people through international activities and non-formal education dimensions, such as youth exchanges, voluntary service, youth initiatives, and training of youth workers. EVS offers young people the opportunity to volunteer up to 12 months in another country. So that's what we did. We took this chance, and now we are spending our time here in wonderful Krakow. When you're a foreigner and in a new country, it's always good to connect with other people, foreigners and locals, so you wouldn't feel lonely and so you could have more fun and more experience. Sometimes it's hard to connect with other people. Maybe you don't know how or where, but trust me that there are more many places and ways in which you can do this. To help me talk about this topic, I brought a guest here. You can say that he is an expert in area of getting to know people and making connections with foreigners and locals here in Krakow, but also in other parts of Poland. And we are continuing our topic of volunteering and connecting with the community. I promise that I will introduce my guest now. So here he is. Good evening, Mehmet. Good evening. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Me, myself, uh, my name is Mehmet and I'm from Turkey. Mehmet Can? Yeah, Mehmet Can. Uh, you should better use my second name because it's like, first it's hard to pronounce. Sometimes. Uh, so yeah, I'm uh, 21 years old. I was studying college in Turkey and I just dropped it to come here, you know, to do voluntary stuff, voluntary work. And uh, I just also in Turkey, I grew up with like volunteering, you know, mm-hmm. like basically I was doing that for five years, at least from high school to until like almost finishing my university. So yeah, for me it's, I mean, that's me. So actually the alone concept of volunteering is not so new to you. You always did volunteering. I I did, I would say I did, but it's like that now here in Krakow, it's like more like connected to professional things, you know. Mm-hmm. I was doing volunteering, it was just small ideas, you know. Oh, Between the people and everything, we were deciding to do some things. And I don't know, like little helps for the ones who need mm-hmm. in the schools or <clears throat> on the streets. Then I met some uh, volunteers which are doing areas in Turkey. Mm-hmm. And I saw they are doing like some things great, you know, like in the hospitals, they're working in the special schools with like kids with disabilities. They work in those places. And I was like, okay, I want to do this, you know. So that is actually how you decided to apply for EVS. Actually, that's not that was not the only reason for me because uh, I was kind of you know I wanted to change my like I wanted to leave my comfort zone because in Mm -hmm. Turkey that after a while I was like getting so sick of studying to be honest like especially I was like studying German teaching and I decided that okay I'm not gonna this is not going to be my future so I had to make uh, make the first move to change my subject or whatever Mm -hmm. and I decided to do yeah this voluntary stuff, which I met them, they told me about like this uh, volunteering, you know, uh, it's a big concept. Mm -hmm. So you can do anywhere in Europe and stuff. So I was like surprised, you know, I didn't know about it before. Then I made a search and everything. So I said, yeah, this is going to my goal. You know, this is going to be my goal. So I worked hard. I prepared everything in like short while. I applied for lots of projects. And at the end in Krakow, I got accepted thanks to stream and I'm here. Yeah, I actually saw your application video. 
Yeah, yeah, that uh, was. Uh... It. <laughs> and it was amazing. I would also take you if I were. <laughs> that in, was a short. Uh, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> was, was a short good. time. It was good. Really, really good thing. Um, okay, so you said that you needed some change in your life, and you didn't want to study what you were studying anymore, and just you needed to leave your comfort zone. Um, but at the end, when you when you really decided, okay, I'm gonna leave home. I'm gonna leave my country. I'm gonna go somewhere else. Was it a hard decision? Actually, like I, me myself, I can say I can adopt myself like in uh, far away from my family, my parents. I can easily adopt myself. That's like the doing this volunteering abroad. It's not for everyone and it's not easy. Yeah, sometimes But, it can be a little tricky. Yeah, it can be. Like you never know because if it's your, I don't know, like some people are doing their first time abroad doing volunteering, you know? Yes, I know. So it's really challenging. But for me, I've been in abroad before. I lived in Croatia for two months, for I example. Know, I know. So, uh, yeah, that was not my first time, and I saw that I could just easily adapt myself into other cultures because I'm not. I'm just like I can easily connect with people and connect connect with the environment. You know. Yeah, I know, and that's why you're here so, today. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it's not that easy. Uh, sorry, it's uh, it's easy, but some for some people, it's not, it's not. that easy. So yeah. it depends. I agree. I completely agree. Yeah. It's much easier if you already have some experience, yeah, yeah, if yeah. you have some background, and also if you have support, what we definitely had, at least here. Um, how did your family and friends react when you said that you were leaving Turkey? Well, uh, my friends, uh, they, they were supportive, my friends, because they're like... Uh, They knew that, like I was always telling them, okay, I'm, guys, I'm going to leave this country one day, you know, even a short while, I don't know. Maybe it will take more, I don't know, years, I will disappear. So yeah. get ready for that. They were okay. If I'm going to talk about my family, yeah, we had our, you know, discussions somehow. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, like, um, I mean, uh, it's about also the culture. My mom was like, she's kind of old tra tradition mm -hmm. woman. So for her... For me to go abroad and stuff, she's like so afraid. Okay, it's so different, you know, than Turkish culture. You're not gonna feel good. You're gonna feel like I don't know, away from the people. But she, of course, she like she cannot know that how am I with the people yeah. outside, you know. So yeah, I was, like, was trying to explain her that yeah, I'm gonna do good, mom. You know. I know, but that, that's because that's you. You know, yeah, you yeah, will yeah. really handle yourself. And anywhere you are, you will make friends, you will meet people. But for her, maybe she was thinking, okay, was, you're gonna be yeah, yeah, of course. in a different It's like for her, Turkey is more safe. She's just saying, yeah, we are here. Your family is here. If something you're happens. Gonna if something happens, we are here. Yeah, you're gonna study here. You're gonna, you can like study and then go abroad, you know. Because yeah. she, she wanted me to finish my university as well. Of course. I'm not telling people to do that, like just quit your studies and come of which course. is there, there it's better to finish your studies and come you know but you know I was fed up and I came yeah. I did that but it's not the you know smoothest idea to do that like to just drop your studies in the middle and come I mean it's a great experience for me like I will go back to Turkey and I'm gonna have my you know uh, university again let's say mm -hmm. and I will have this experience which I had here yeah and, and your mom will great. be happy that you are back She will be. <laughs> I somehow think <laughs> that Turkish moms and Croatian moms are not so different. I, I no 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 no. We are not at all. I lived in Croatia for two months. So you know. I can say so even grandmoms, they're oh, not different at all. <laughs> grandmas are special thing, you know, really special thing. But <laughs> yes, I think we have some connections there, even through history, but also today. Okay, so we said that you are here. Uh, we are all here for nine months. Yeah. And now it's already been five months. I stopped counting. So I know, I know, <laughs> me saying. too, and it's going by so fast. But can you tell us a little bit about what do you actually do here in Krakow? What do I do? Like, about work, if I talk, I work in kindergarten mm -hmm. with the Polish kids, which they're like three to four years old. Mm -hmm. What do you do with them? What do I do? Like, um, my kindergarten is like um, ecological. Mm -hmm. The topic is ecology, mm -hmm. I would say. So we do some, um, I don't know, like, um, let's say events or stuff with the kids and I help teachers to prepare mm -hmm. activities activities and I create my own activities as well so I teach them like uh, I teach them dances you know mm -hmm. I give them Turkish lessons sometimes English nice uh, now uh, like it's lots of 
things has changed in my kindergarten. Now I'm working with five classes, actually, not mm. one. Whoa. Because <laughs> they said, yeah, th this dance thing, so we're going to show all to the people in some occasions, you know, yeah. special days. And now I'm working with, uh, like, uh, yeah, five classes. It is so tiring, but it's amazing because, like, you're just having fun and smiling with the kids six hours per day. And I know that you're a good dancing teacher because we did some dancing. Yeah, that's actually... I'm teaching one of them oh, that I taught you nice. to the kids and they ki they dance pretty well. You would be surprised, you know. I should come and see maybe. You should. And we should get some pictures <laughs> so we can publish them. But yes, dancing with you was was very uh, was really a lot of fun for even for us. Uh, so I bet that it's super super fun for kids. It is. It is. Kids are like crazy about it. That's why they that they told me to to do it, do, do it the other classes too because kids time in my class they were like crazy having fun. So yeah, teachers Let, told yeah. to me yeah go do with the other classes if you can. I was like okay why not. And you feel good doing it. Yeah, I get tired <laughs> all day. Like I'm like dying, but I, it's like good, you know. It's like I'm eating a lot in Krakow because Polish food is amazing. I know. <laughs> And I'm losing my weight in the kindergarten dancing. So it's perfect. You it's don't need perfect. a gym. The you don't need anything. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Uh, so your job really, really seems cool. Uh, what about Krakow, the what city a, itself? Uh, what about Krakow? Actually, the reason I chose m to do my volunteer service in Krakow, it was because I've been in Krakow before. Oh, okay. Like I was uh, having this uh, Middle Europe tour, like Budapest, Krakow, Prague, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And out of them... I love the Krakow the most, so like, you know, I wanted to do my EVS in a big city, of course, like yeah. I wanted to have some things to do, have the experience as much as like I could, you know, the most, in the most, uh, I don't know, like uh, beautiful way, let's say, you know. Yes. So I saw Krakow before in March last year. I was like, okay, if I'm going to do, I will do in Krakow. So I applied for, I tried to find some you know, options to do the EVS Here. some, yeah, in Krakow. I found a lot. Then I found the publishment of, you know, stream published yeah. on the EVS Vacancy Group, whatever. And then, yeah, I applied for all the, actually... Um, all the positions. All the positions, offering. even yours, maybe. You know? oh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I applied for all the positions I could. And I applied with the video because I wanted to, yeah, be strong because I wanted to do have it, like, in a second, you know, like I didn't want to, yeah, just send them just uh, text. text, and it's gonna maybe it's gonna be just another. Day. They will not even. I, I was thinking that you know they, because if it's text in front of you, I mean, yeah. you don't give that and much attention. And with the video, you gave them a chance to really see you. Yeah, exactly. So I applied with the video, applied with all to do all positions, and yeah, the Anna Novak, my lovely coordinator, she is amazing. She yes. picked me. Like, we had the Skype meeting and everything. I was so happy. Like, in the meeting, I saw her face. Like, okay, she likes me. You know, yeah, so yeah. I'm going to go to Krakow. I was yeah. so happy. I had actually the yeah. same experience <laughs> with mine. So it was great. And actually, what you did is maybe a really, really good advice for people who want to apply for EVS uh, sometime soon. Because sometimes in some applications, uh, there's an option. Like, you can apply with the text uh, and the video or just a video. So... If you apply with the text and a video, you probably have more chances exactly, to, exactly. to get it. I mean, if they want to do EVS, which we will talk about it for sure about EVS, but uh, they can like find their way to do it. Like they can have some slides or have some video. Just just a letter, it's okay, but you have to be perfect about it. Yeah. I don't know. Like you have to make them read it. You know. Yeah. But if you want, want to be more effective, choose something visual. Just you know? something a little bit extra. Yeah, like exactly. Just go the one extra mile so you will stand out out of other people. Exactly. I mean, it's a good advice not just for uh, volunteering. It's a good advice even for uh, job interviews, yeah. applications for different jobs, but for different uh, internships. So it's always good to stand out a little bit so people can remember you. Yeah, for me, I just cut uh, my script out of my motivation letter and I put that in the video. In the video, yes. It was I just visual and my motivation question letter I was reading it no and the, that's it the, the video was amazing really yeah. I saw it and it, it was really good like I said I would take so you. sad that we cannot show it on the radio but <laughs> yeah <laughs> but maybe if no people visual. contact us uh, in stream maybe we can share it with them yeah, if for sure. they want and if you will be fine with it um, so okay you said you like Krakow uh, you already mentioned Polish food 
Polish food is amazing. Like I was not expecting that. Like I been to Krakow before. Like uh, okay, like Krakow for me was like amazing. You know, yeah. The old town, the the buildings, old buildings, everything. But I didn't get to eat lots of food when I was in here in March. Mm -hmm. This was just three days. Yeah. So I was just uh, in the hostel, just traveling around, just getting some snacks to eat. That's it. I came here the first, like, or second day. Yeah, second day. I sat in a restaurant, and I said, "Yeah, something traditional." And they brought me this uh, soup in the bread. You know, it's jurek. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. Like I was like, it was amazing. That's how I started my Polish foods. You know, uh, serving. I don't yeah, know. But I think all the volunteers that I talked to and all the other foreigners here, they really all fell in love with Polish food. Yeah, it's amazing. It I mean, is, it is. It really is. <laughs> I mean, Polish cuisine is not so much different than Croatian. It depends where you are in Croatia. If you're in the north, um, you definitely can make some, uh, like, we have s similar things, si like some similar yeah. cakes, some similar dishes. Uh, but still, I discovered so many new things here. Like we don't have pierogi, and uh -huh. pierogi are amazing. I mean, I even found some um, food from my city here. Yeah. Like they call it shashpuk. I have this exactly <laughs> same in my city. We call it shashlik, and uh, it's from the beef, of course. It's in Turkey, and they have it from the pork here. Mm -hmm. It's like the taste and everything is like so similar. For me, it was like so surprising, you know. Then I found out that actually it's it is Polish. Oh, you know? <laughs> okay. That's it's not like it's because it was only in my city in some in one restaurant even. You know, I didn't ah, know. So maybe like a Polish person yeah, yeah, yeah. is there and doing something. Yeah, yeah. I just found out and I was like, oh, it is so great, you know. Yeah, in Krakow, we really have a lot of opportunities to meet different people, to taste different food, um, and to also see a lot of different uh, Polish tr traditions because yeah, people exactly. in Poland really celebrate a lot of stuff and it's always so nice. Um, so what would you say that is your favorite, favorite Polish food? If you can pick one. Uh, it's kind of hard, but okay. I will I will say I will say actually Shashwick because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's I, I hope it's exactly Polish but they told me it is Shashwick is like uh, some chopped meat you know like mm -hmm. the pork meat it's like you grill it like it's like you have like I don't know onions in between blah blah mm -hmm. you grill it on the, and it's it's good it's amazing. yeah for me it's amazing also the, if I want to say another one is of course pierogi. pierogi I love pierogi nothing without pierogi yeah. <laughs> nothing without I would, I, when I'll go home I will just take pierogis with me you, know, like, yeah, you can just clothes make your own yeah or make your yeah, yeah. I should I should <laughs> like Monte yeah <laughs> it's great um, do you miss home do you miss your friends do you miss your language do you miss your culture do you yeah, miss yeah I would uh, I would Miss more like a month ago, but I've been to Turkey yeah. just like <laughs> just like two weeks ago. But yeah, I do, I do miss my. Uh, I was missing Turkish food a lot. I mean, still I love Polish food and everything, but I miss the Turkish food, you know, the, because I grew yeah, up the taste of home. with that. Yeah, it's I basically know. taste of your home, spices and everything. Yeah. I mean, I miss that a lot, so I brought like lots of spices with me, like two kilos of spices with me, Very which nice. I don't know how I'm gonna use them. I will come to try it. Of course, you should. And uh, I was missing, like, my mom too much, you mm -hmm. know, because she is the one always, like, I'm, I mean, like, she was the one always being parenting me, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know, she's, for me, it's, her place is somewhere else in my life, you know? Yeah, I know, I understand. Like. I mean, it, it, it may be similar for you and me, because we've been abroad and we lived far away from our families and friends already. Yeah. But being in a foreign country, so far away, you, you and me both. Um, okay, I was also just home a week ago, so it's different. <laughs> uh, but at first, you know, I didn't miss anything so much because everything was new. Like our jobs and the city and the people and everything. And then when you already like find your way here, you know where's your store, you know who are your the, the people around you. Yeah. Then you start missing the people. Because like... The feeling is like, I will tell you, like, okay, you can spend here years, you know, spend here years. But when you go home, after three days, your hometown, you know, your original home. Yeah. After three days, these years you spent in another country, they will feel like dreams, you know. Yeah. It was I like know. a dream, you know, you've never been there, yeah. something like that. Because it's like your home and when you go there once and you're basically saying the word like 
feeling like you're home. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're home. feeling the same. That's everything. Yeah, you're home That's again. Yeah. yeah, like nothing changed and no time has passed yeah. and you are back <laughs> again where you started. Yes, it was exactly the the same for me. Uh, seeing the the winter at home, even though it's March, um, <laughs> but it was nice. I think for people should go abroad. Just if not if for nothing else, then to get that feeling of home when they come back. Of course, it's like a it's like we always say it. Like you have to challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Leave yeah. your comfort zone. Go to another country. But and don't forget. You will, of course, you will not forget your culture because you also have to like share everything with the people in abroad. Which, yeah. if you want to get something, you have to give something, of you course. know, to people interesting. Give something interesting from your culture, from your family, from your friends. Then you will get a lot. Of course, I I agree completely. Yeah. Uh, but now, okay, we talked about missing home and about being abroad. Um, what do you think that it was or is still the biggest challenge for you here? Ah, biggest challenge for me. Okay, I, actually, it's like some for some people it's weird, but for me it really is the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Because now I was in Turkey like uh, when two like two weeks ago when you have minus fifteen here, mm -hmm. I had like plus twenty. Oh God! In my city, so like my winter, the the lowest it can get is like five six degrees six degrees you know yeah not minus 15 so here when i feel that minus 15 i'm starting like i love the city of project i'm saying like mehmet what are you doing here like <laughs> think over it you know <laughs> it's amazing like i'm loving the city loving the people loving the project and everything but it's so cool but in a way it's so challenging it's good actually i love it like to challenge myself and everything but sometimes i'm i was just you know thinking like <sighs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> what am I going to do? I need to get warm. I was wearing like everything I could, you know. I know. It's passing now, but still, um, yeah, it was the weather. But I think I'm kind of used to that because I'm not getting sick. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> also the weather is getting much yeah, nicer now. Yeah, weather is getting. Thank God. Today was amazing. I know the weather. I know. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, okay, so I think it's time now for another break. So let's listen to This is Pursuit of Happiness by uh, Joshua Tixey and Anthem for Huddle Masses by Bourgeois. And we are back in the studio with Mehmet. So Mehmet, the reason why I invited you here tonight is because I know that you managed to meet a lot of people and I meet a lot of people, like really a lot of people, and connect with them. There are foreigners, there are some Erasmus students, other volunteers and locals. So how did you manage to do that? All right. So uh, for me, like the the reason I chose, I will go from there. The reason I chose Krakow, it was not the city itself. It was the people here. Mm -hmm. Because I, for me, if I'm doing this abroad thing or doing volunteering or you call it, I always want to and I seek to meet people because that's what I enjoy the most, more than the visiting places or everything. Because you have like big international community in Krakow. Yes. So... I was always seeking a way to, you know, to to meet them. I don't know, to meet the locals, to meet to travelers or people, volunteers like me, you know. So I was using lots of things like uh, coach surfing, mm -hmm. that thing. I go to yeah their meetings and stuff. I meet lots of people. Or I use like, um, there are some applications which you can use hangouts, you know. Mm -hmm. So you have some meetings, you go, you meet lots of foreigners or locals. Or like I, I try to um, join lots of volunteer work except my except work, your work work yeah. as well because they had, yet you have like this uh, some collaborations in mm -hmm. Krakow, and they do some events. They look for uh, volunteers. So I was I just you know go search it and I find them and I text them, saying yeah I'm, I want to do it you know yeah because the reason I want to do it is basically to I want to meet people. Yeah, and I really, I really see that uh, when I talk to you and when I listen to you, because whenever you were out somewhere meeting people or on some meetings like couch surfing, uh, couch surfing, whatever, you always texted us like your stream volunteers in the group. Hey guys, I'm here and here because of this. Come yeah, of course, me. because like I also like okay, I met some people might think yeah, you only have like 30 volunteers here so you don't need like to make more you yeah, know, like, like it's friends. enough man come on but you know I want to yeah, make my friends have like a good uh, 
chance here too because if you are doing UVS, you have to do it in the fullest, you know. So yeah. you have to meet people, you have to go to the events. I don't know, you ha you have to do whatever you can, whatever you want. Yeah, and I mean, Krakow is really giving us a lot of opportunities for that because I think that it's not. Maybe here it's easier than in some other places because it's a big city, a lot of students, a lot of young people, a lot of foreigners, even if they are just tourists. Uh, travelers, like lots of travelers. travelers. I meet them, like, you know, On because I'm a basis. traveler myself as well. Yeah. So I have lots of things to talk with them. I In Turkey, I hitchhike. I don't know. I travel around Turkey. So they want to know my story and I yeah. want to know theirs, you know. So I start talking and it's so interesting for both sides. So... And it's a good com conversation there. So that's what I enjoy, you know. Like you said, I you give people, something and, then, and exactly. then you get something back. Exactly. Yeah. But w let's say you go one on one of these meetings and um, you meet some people. Yeah. How do you stay in contact with them? Like, how do you uh, make those uh, people your friends or like good acquaintances? Because sometimes, you know, we meet someone and then we forget about them. How yeah, do you it's keep like in contact? there are actually like uh, lots of, I mean, there are like most of them. To be honest, okay, you meet in that night. At the end, like you disappear because they are travelers or whatever, yeah, and they, you don't see yeah, them. They go away. But pff, I have like lots of friends right now because of those meetings. You know, in Krakow, I have yeah. lots of friends. Like you know, you guys know. Sometimes I come yeah. with like people you don't know. Yeah. You're like, who are they? I'm like, they're my friends. I met them. You know. Yeah. Because you're having a nice conversation and everything, you talk talk at the end. Okay, you have, you have to, you want to keep it that you know mm -hmm. you want to keep talking about some other stuff because you know for both sides, it's interesting yeah. what you talk you know, because your mind is like uh, maybe it's like matching and you talk lots of stuff you know. Yeah, you just really enjoy the yeah you enjoy the conversation you so you want to keep going so you I don't know you just change numbers or that uh, you find a way to contact again or you go to next meeting and then you see them again you see them again you know yeah but it's hard for sometimes for the travelers because travelers they're traveling they go, yeah they go so they're in Krakow and next week they will not be here yeah. but for locals it's not the same they can be in those meetings every day and uh, for the travelers even like let's say uh, I. I love making like new friends from like new people from all around the world because like it's also gives you opportunity to know the culture even in their countries because even if you weren't there yeah yeah even if you were but the thing is you can go there because like some people like especially the people who are using coach surfing coach mm -hmm. surfing you know the meaning of to you host people yeah in your place and you go people to host you yeah you know I know you give them coaches. Yeah. <laughs> basically <laughs> so yeah if I meet lots of people or let's say I, I want to go to Netherlands and I have like two friends there already because yeah, I met from Coach Surfing go. I can go I, they can, I can stay at their place they say and we can just travel around they can show me around and everything it's amazing Yeah. you yeah, know I have my free guide in the city already yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me do you think that um, meeting people like that okay sometimes those are organized events like by Erasmus or Couchsurfing or yeah. something but do you think that sometimes uh, it can be risky in any way? Uh, of course, it can be risky because, like, um, uh, human, like, <laughs> you're human, like, you know, you never know, like, what, what they think like, while they're talking to you. I don't know. Like, it's even, like, sometimes you don't know of your friends after years. You, you maybe yeah, think, you're yeah, what's going on? You're surprised. So it's normal. Like, I go to coach surfing meetings, tandem meetings, to the language exchanges. I go like lo to lots of meetings in I Krakow. Know. Of course, I had my like um, bad experiences as well. Like it's not the worst, but still, yeah. Some people would still feel so bad and maybe stop going after that. You know, you still have like it's not gonna be harm you in a way, but it's like you don't. Feel people so are rude. Well. Some people yeah. are rude and stuff. You know, like you don't know like. Yeah, you will not feel comfortable. Yeah, but you know? sometimes it, the people. But it's so less. It, the, the, the people can even be like okay and nice but I don't know you had an off night and you just don't feel like you got something but you should still uh, like push yourself to maybe go next time it maybe will be better with other people yeah of course but it's it's not a common thing because like uh, people who are using these uh, meetings mm -hmm. they're most of them are open-minded because they are True. doing this to meet people yeah they already to know want the to cultures you know other people there are some less people like so few we can meet like I don't know like once in 20 times yeah of course 
and there will be some rude people yeah. which they are going there for the first time they don't know what's going on they just they're just bored and going there to and they don't like it and they can bother people yeah. in a way but can you give some advice maybe to people who are now listening to us and they they want to join one of those events but they don't feel like you know they're maybe shy or they think it's the thing it's the thing because like sometimes i use let's say i use hangouts like in hangouts you hang out it's an application yeah. so you meet people you have fun enjoy blah blah and i i told them yeah come to this meeting you know and they say but i don't know anyone there mm -hmm. but that's the point no one knows anyone there yeah the thing is you, when you enter those places you just turn to anyone and say hi they will hi they will smile and say hi to you and you will start the conversation yeah you don't do that in randomly bars that course, much you know yeah. but <laughs> like in there because that's the point you have to meet people you have to know everything you know i mean you have to know some things about each other and everything mm -hmm. so that's the point why they uh, organize these events so they should never be i don't know afraid or shy about it because even if they are they should go you know yeah. They yeah. <laughs> just go and try yourself you and to, like, and you'll feel so relieved when you once you enter you say hi to one person and they will say hey hey how are you blah blah they will start and you'll start with talking lots of people that yeah. night you have to push yourself and yeah. like put some trust in people exactly that they will be okay yeah yeah i mean just like in life in everyday life um okay so uh you're meeting people you're making friends in in Krakow in other countries uh we also had uh, our midterm trainings and yeah. uh our on arrival trainings where we met other volunteers who are also in Poland but in other cities which was also a great opportunity for us to uh, meet them and to just to connect yeah. so after we can visit or even to make some collaborations with them exactly which is also great so even if you go on EVS and maybe you are in a smaller city with not a lot of these events you can still meet other if, people i mean i would tell to people if they are if like i don't know if they cannot if they are trying to enter EVS into big cities and they cannot they can go for the smaller cities there is nothing like uh, it's not gonna be your, like uh, I don't know it's gonna be there will be there will be no differences what I mean mm -hmm. in Krakow you have lots of the things to do everything but if you go to smaller towns in Poland maybe you will have even more you know because you will have a chance to travel a lot yeah you know yeah you will travel all around Europe all around the cities in Poland you know in Krakow we are lucky in a way because you always have something to do always so you don't leave the city that much but if you are in the smaller towns you will have more free time you will travel a lot you will meet people yeah so and it will be like a bi little bigger push for you to get out of your comfort zone and yeah. to travel and to meet people yeah, yeah I agree so they can just go for it um, Okay, from so, and so far from your experience, uh, what do you think that it's the most important thing when it comes to meeting new people uh, in a foreign country or even in your own country, in your own city, or even in a new city in your own country if you move? Just, you know, meet them and to make some kind of a good connection with them. What do you think that it's the most important thing? Uh, the most important thing like... Um... Yeah, just to meet people and to keep in touch with them. I mean, like, uh, if you're like, I don't know, if you're meeting people, okay, you're having the experience, you're having their experience, you're like learning a lot. Mm -hmm. But if you keep being in touch with them, you're going to know even more, you know. And uh, you have to like uh, develop your, I don't know, um, experience, mind. like Mindset. mind, yeah. you know, mindset. Like, so you have to as much as you can I don't know like you, if you're meeting people don't don't just yeah okay you meet that people and like you can have like hundreds of people like it it doesn't matter just you can try to keep in contact with people you know yeah. you will always have time don't like you know for that so you can you're go saying uh, just try to do it you, you need to want it and you need to stay open yeah yeah exactly you stay open just uh, to like develop your mind or to know the I don't know, like, it's, I mean, once you do it, you're going to feel better anyway, you know? Yeah. Once you do it, you're going to feel better about the people and you're going to, you will want to meet more people, you know? Because uh, you already know, like, had some 
people's experience from the first month, so they told you everything. Yeah. And some that's how I came to Krakow actually. If I was not like <laughs> making friends, if I was not listening to people, if I was not keeping in touch with them, I wouldn't be here sitting and talking to you. Yeah, you would not know about TVS, yeah. you would not apply and you would not come here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I definitely see uh what you're saying. Um so is there anything else that you would like to add when it comes to meeting people and making connections? Well, uh I mean I would say like uh, if people want to like I, like I was in Turkey when I was in Turkey I was like uh, okay I was not going to talk about volunteering or something let's say I was hitchhiking on the roads you know mm -hmm. it's like for me it was the same feeling because I'm hitchhiking to a car it stops and it's a new people for me you know inside yeah. of the car so I talk with them for half an hour for two hours for three hours wherever they go until you know For me, like once you feel it, like you're always talking, talking, you know, and getting you experiences. You always want more. It's like you're de developing yourself, your yeah. your skills, even you know, like uh, you know more than lots of people. You know, it's just yeah. it's just up to talking, like for half an hour, for 20 minutes, for five minutes, talk with someone, and you're gonna get more. You know, yeah. and you're gonna want more. Yeah, you're going to want more. Just like it, like people. Some people are just like so away from it, like you know. Okay, you can be shy and everything, but so for some people it's just not necessary. Like they're like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Why? Why do I need to talk lots of like uh, people? I don't know, you know. But you don't know what you're going to gain from that, you know. Yeah, maybe even some people think that it's not for them, but if they try, they're gonna love it. Maybe. Maybe. You know? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So, good. Good advice. Yeah, they just should. Try. They should try because, like, just like I said, like just talking, like even in a short while, you get a lot. Yeah, you and can it, get so much from people. And it opens people. like doors and windows. Exactly, that you your mind is like gro growing. You know, you you are like opening your way and like you're not looking straight in your life anymore. If you start meeting people, if you start meeting like knowing cultures and everything, then you have a uh, like eyes everywhere. You know, yeah, ears everywhere. You hear everything. You know everything. You develop yourself. Yeah, I really you know? love how you said that. You have eyes everywhere and you yeah. have ears everywhere. It's, <laughs> it's great. Um, so let's just come back uh, to our topic of volunteering because that's why we are here in right. Krakow. Um, from everything so far, uh, would you recommend people to go volunteering abroad? Like this is like, if I would, I would for sure I would recommend because it's it's the, like such of experience that you could get in your life like maybe once or twice. I don't know. It's not easy, you know. Yeah. So they should definitely go for it before it's too late, before their thirties, if you want to yeah. do, you know, EVS. But like I said, like the this is the best way to, like I don't know, to challenge yourself, encourage yourself to do something in your life, because after this experience, you will feel so different, so different. I believe that, like there will be there are some things in your life that you you're afraid to do, you know. You're backing yourself down, yeah. you know, like, I, I cannot do it. You're so afraid. But after doing this, the ZBS thing, you're challenging yourself that much, you know. And you have enough courage. You have enough courage to do everything in your life. So you're going to, I don't want to say you're going to become a better person, but you're going to be better in a way, like uh, how your like mind works, you know. Mm -hmm. So you you're going to know think yourself better. More, like, wisely, wider, you know. Yeah. You're going to think wider yeah. and you're going to, see lots more options that you didn't see before in your Definitely. life you know yeah I, i i agree so they have to go for it and even like even like if let's not talk like so deep thing even they can just go to have like a norm, like amazing fun you know yeah <laughs> for this time like you can just meet lots of people have fun see places eat a lot and you know that's yeah, amazing I have an amazing month yeah like, or, or weeks amazing. or months like yeah. or, or your entire year depending on how long you go um i agree i agree with you definitely um i remember i don't know if you remember on our first meeting in uh rec club with mm -hmm. stream when they welcomed all of us they said uh tonight when you go home i think it was like our first or second day here mm -hmm. and they said when you go home tonight look in the mirror and 
say goodbye to that person because we guarantee you that after change. nine months you are not going to be the same person. Exactly. You will change so much. And maybe the change will not be so visible, you know, it will not happen from day to day. But in the end, when you have okay, our nine months here, somebody is maybe six or somebody is a year, it doesn't matter. But when you look at yourself on the first day and on the last day after nine months, you are you will not be the same person. That's what they said. And some people were like, okay, you know, maybe I will learn something. Maybe I will get a little more experience, but I will still be the same person. Mm -hmm. But I think that now after nine months, uh, after five months here and with four more to go, I actually think that they could maybe be right, you know, that maybe we will look the same or um, maybe other people will see us the same when we come back to our countries. But yeah. I think on the inside, we will definitely change. You will be know changed. the difference yeah. because like for me, I already know, like in five, I know Actually, I know my capacity. I wouldn't think that I would just work with kids for six hours per day. And I love kids. That's why I chose it. You know, yeah. I love kids. Everybody it was like, come on, six hours per day with 24 kids. And you you get tired and too much and everything. But then it becomes so enjoyable because you like, you know, they are the kids and everything. Like everything in that country is changing you in a way, yeah. you know. Even the kids, like, they are the best teachers for me. You know, like, they are teaching me, like, I don't know, the language, the culture. They are filling me with the, you know, Polish uh, things. New, new like, so information. <laughs> new I'm like, information. Yeah. So I'm also like, uh, yeah, I know that, uh, yeah, I'm, my capacity is getting wider. Yeah. So I'm getting a lot. I'm learning a lot. And I'm doing a lot with yeah. the kids and everything, you know. When Venla was here last week, she said, even when I'm having a bad day and I'm tired and I don't know, because of something, I'm not feeling the best, I go to work and the kids just come running to me and they hug me and everything is fine. Of course it is. That's that's <laughs> amazing feeling, you know, like, you know, even like the, for me, my favorite thing, you know, what is that? Like the, they talk to me in Polish. Mm -hmm. They know that I don't speak Polish. Yeah. Do they care? No, because they're kids. <laughs> and it's amazing, like... All the time, like, you know, you when they want to ask something, you know, they ask, like, Prosha Pana, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So they're asking a permission to do something. Yes. I don't, I have no idea <laughs> what they're talking about. They love me so much because after that, Prosha Pana, blah, blah, I always say Mojas. <laughs> I don't know what they're asking. <laughs> they can ask anything. They're kids, you know? Yeah. It can be even dangerous, like, you know, can I jump out of her yeah. or something? Uh, I'm like, Mojas, Mojas. <laughs> But the point is, they really like you. Yeah, uh, the, not just I because you say yes to everything, but they really like me because I love them. That's yeah. the point. You spend you know? time with them, yeah. and you really put. The, I mean, I work <laughs> with kids also, not now, but a few years ago, and it was my first time working with kids. And and you really realize that if you give like fifty percent to kids, they will give you back the hundred. Exactly. Always. Exactly. Always, and it's amazing. It's really amazing because it, when you work with adults. Uh, sometimes you can try hard and you get nothing back. Sometimes it's, but with kids, it's always the same. You give them something and you get double back. Like if I was working with the adults, it wouldn't be the same, my experience here. I mean, Definitely. it's okay, you can work with the adults and everything, but for me, I'm really saying they are my teachers, not like, like about the culture, about the language. Kids are my teachers. So it's very for nice. me, it's easier for me to <laughs> get from them everything, you know? Um, yeah. When we started this conversation, you told me that you were studying uh, to be a German teacher in Turkey. Yeah, yeah. And now you are here working with kids and you met a ton of people. Um, did this experience change your perspective when it comes to like job, education or life in general? Like I, it will give me some ideas, but I'm still waiting for it. Like I, I'm saying, okay, after these nine months here. I'm gonna do something new because I drop everything, you know? Yeah. So I said, I'm gonna do something else. I may even stay in Krakow. I don't know, in four months I can decide to do that. Yeah, I can too. find a job or whatever, you know? At first I will, uh, and I probably, I will, I'm going to study and I would love to study in, maybe in Krakow or somewhere. I'm still waiting for, I don't know, some ideas in my mind, it's like, with this experience, I see, I can see that I have lots more options that I didn't know before, you mm -hmm. know? So I have much more, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, me too. So like I, I have, know. I can do like, now I have more, I don't know, like I care less about my future that I did before. I'm like, 
more relaxed, you know? Yeah, like you know that something yeah, will be something good. Something will be good. You yeah. know, I know that I'm going to do something and it's not... If you believe in it, you know, if you try to do it... Yeah, it will happen. It's going to happen. So at first, of course, I was like, I have to study. I have to go there. I have to do this. Yeah, we're very, uh, like, we have a lot of uh, expectations, our own and our families and friends, like, you need yeah. to do this, and then you need to do this, and right after that, you need to do something else. But maybe when you take a, a year like this, uh, you realize that you don't really have to, and that you should think about yourself yeah. and your, um, like, what do you want to do, and where do you think that you could be the best, yeah. and how can you contribute to the society, exactly. and what can you take? Yeah. So... I think that this experience is, even if it doesn't help you to realize what you really want, it can help you understand what you really it's, don't want. It is up to you. Like, it's not going to give you a job or it's not going to change your life forever. Yeah, of course. If yes. But if you try on that, if you try to get things in the right way, like, you will not concern about so many things in your life after EBS. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because you'll think wiser you know yeah you just know more yeah exactly you just know more i agree um okay thank you for uh all this wonderful information air experiences that you shared uh with me and to everyone who is listening um we are at the end of our broadcast and just before we finish uh don't forget that you can follow our organization stream on facebook at stream association also on instagram stream dash association and you can also get a lot of information on our webpage, uh, stream.org.pl. And thank you, Mehmet, one more time for being with us, for giving us the information, for being an amazing guest uh, in my show. Thank you, Agnieszka, for all the technical support. You are wonderful, as always. Uh, thank you, Stream, for giving us this opportunity, this chance. And thank you to all of you who are listening to us. We'll be back next month. I'm saying goodbye with some more good music. This is Moments by the Mad Pix Project. Stay excellent.